Always not funny, but yeah, I know, right? Yeah. session. Uh, we have 10 minutes for a comment session for items not on tonight's agenda. Please just identify yourself for the record. Yes, uh, Donnie. I'll yell it out. Uh, Don Berger, Montgomery, New York. Uh, Fred, uh, what I want to just briefly bring up to you guys is that what's very discomforting in the past couple of uh, planning board meetings uh, that I find this company, and I think a lot of people find this company, is the fact that uh, the attorneys for the applicants and their, uh, their uh, group of people within those applicants, they keep uh, bringing up the moratorium and how they need to have you guys rush uh, things in, uh, before the moratorium. Uh, Fred, you know we're uh, looking to have a moratorium. I object to them always pushing you to that matter. Uh, I also uh, would like to say, Fred, the moratorium that the uh, town uh, is looking at, I have a copy of it here, I'm sure you've seen a copy of it, it really falls short of what a moratorium is. There's too much garbage in this thing here. It's not a straight out moratorium, there's too many provisions to it, and I would like this planning board to possibly consider uh, having a discussion with the town board uh, for the 18th of that moratorium law. Anyone else? Barbara, you had to... <coughs> Hi, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Realty. Um, when you approved the site plan for Selfish, I was on site today, there are now two access points on 17K. Originally, there was only one for construction that was approved. Um, who's, in whose purview is it to modify a site plan in agreement? Is that under yours or that building We would approve the, the ability to have two, but the DOT would have the permitting well, responsibility. There is another, there's another access point. It goes through the property owned by Orange County Water, goes through my lands, and then uh, across the part of the site. I thought also in the original agreement they were going to be removing trees within the construction area. There's about a 60 foot uh, strip between the wetlands and our property line where I was there for maybe an hour today and I saw that big trees come down. All of the old growth is going to be gone so that any sound barrier while they're working, any dust barrier, any site barrier is going to be gone and it will take 20 years for their landscaping to grow back. We will all be gone by that time. We need to keep a better handle on what we approve before we just blanket approve just because somebody else told us it was going to be good. Anyone else? Yes. Hi, um, who's my mic? There's no mic because I'm going to talk really loud. I just wanted to actually agree with uh, Mr. Berger. You've been without a decent, comprehensive plan for decades. Uh, 
why aren't you having the moratorium go right up to the FBIS? Like you originally said, what, I'd like to know what it was that got in the cave. Why would you cave? You finally get in a comprehensive plan. You finally get a get a chance to have a, a plan in front of you that actually works. And I'd also like to know, since you've been all there for so long, what kind of ideas that you have that you've researched to bring to the comprehensive plan? Because some of the people that have been put on the committee were on one before or have been sitting there the whole time we were without one, and they didn't come up with any ideas. Um, the other thing is someone gave me this. I'm not going to say who, but I find it disturbing. And perhaps you can put some clarity to what this means. Clear the air regarding the social media statements that my having a real estate uh, sales license may have influenced my decision making as a member of the Town of Montgomery Planning Board. I obtained my New York State real estate license in 2008 and I affiliated myself with the RJ Smith Realty Group. I entered the real estate sales field just as the 2008 2009 real estate market crash was beginning. I, I guess I just Excuse want to me, know. I'm not done with RJ Smith. I included my real estate license and affiliation with R.J. Smith on my annual disclosure form as a planning board member and filed this with the Town of Montgomery Ethics Board. <coughs> During this time, I recused myself from any planning board projects that were associated with the R.J. Smith Group or any of his brokers. The real, estart, the real estate market crash, personal and family reasons caused me to go inactive around 210. I renewed my license in 2010 and 12 despite being inactive. My license expired in 2013. I've had no business dealings with the R.J. Smith Realty Group since that time. Thank you. <coughs> so the decisions on Medline and all that, you don't have any say on that at all? I'm not a real estate license agent. What is your She's name not. on his program? You, you must have set up a LinkedIn account to put your no. name on it for R.J. Smith Realty. I didn't do that. Well, that's the only way you can do it, unless somebody else put you on there. Okay. Yes, Cherie, you be the last one. Thank you. I'll be very quick. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Board. I would just like to simply ask that in your assessing of the DEIS as you're getting ready to go for Medline, a very quick question is the last point in addressing the impact magnitude of this project. It is declared by the New York State Office of Historic Preservation and Parks that as it is proposed as the current site plan, it will diminish the historical value of the town. I would like to make sure and ask, what have we done and what is the mitigation for this type of impact? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Jeff, right? Yep. Good evening, board. So um, I'm really discouraged in the time frame that these gigantic projects have been pushed forward. They're not even a nautical mile away from each other. You have two million, over two million square feet of warehouse space being plopped in your backyard. <coughs> and the attorneys for Medline, two weeks ago when they were here, they said, the FEIS has to go through. And I said, why? He says, because we own the property. The attorney, that attorney's not here tonight, okay? Because one of his other comments is like, let's get out of here, because he was angry that the board didn't act fast enough on their behalf. You're supposed to be here representing us, not these big gigantic companies, not R.J. Smith. You're supposed to be representing the people that live in this area. It's absolutely disgusting. It's their property. Who cares if it's their property? Who cares? They do. Okay. Um, <coughs> next on our agenda this evening is Medline Montgomery, Medline Industries, Inc., New York State Route 416. It's a draft FEIS. A completeness discussion. Uh, this is a board completeness discussion. The um, public hearing on the site plan for Medline will resume on March 30th in this room of this year, of course. Um, at 7:30, I believe. So the discussion the board's going to have tonight is on the completeness of the final environmental impact statement. Um, 
board, do we have any comments or? Yeah, I circulated a couple um, minor changes to the visual section. Mm -hmm. Just soften the language a little bit. Okay. I don't think that they changed the intent of the document. I think that they just clarify the discussions that we had at the planning consult last week. Okay, just some clarifications then Correct. to add to the document. Um, anyone else? Board? Of course not. No. <clears throat> I have a couple of issues outstanding. Okay. The site plan style issues? Yes. Okay. Okay. We can't hear you back here. Yeah, we can't hear you back here. Sorry. It's okay. I said I wanted to clarify a couple of issues for before I agreed to accept the <coughs> FEIS. Um, one of them is I wanted to speak to Ryan, our lighting consultant, and make sure that he's gotten the lighting levels down to a level that he's comfortable with. Um, there's been some drastic changes, but I just want to make sure I wasn't involved in a lot of the discussion, and I just want to make sure you're comfortable. Well, like I said at the workshop meeting, you know, I worked a lot with the lighting consultant. I talked to Bill once or twice, yeah. and you know, I'm comfortable enough with the language in the FEIS as shown here, um, meets the intent of what we're looking for. Okay. We can make some changes going forward into site plan. I think that we can and we should do that. But the text, I, I believe, matches what the planning board's intent is. Okay. And my second issue has to do with the site view from Route Interstate 84. Uh, at the last meeting, Attorney Larry Walensky said that if they didn't screen the loading docks, then they wouldn't accept a certificate of occupancy for this site. And it's not anything or any language at all that's been added to the FEIS document indicating that that's their intent. Um, there still is a huge gap from I-84 across the drive where the trucks will be going down the 416 that can't be screened or it will be extremely difficult to screen. And they have to figure out a way to do it still. <coughs> there was a determination <coughs> that the loading docks have to be screened just some 15 months ago from the code enforcement officer. I'm not satisfied that they've met that. Okay. I think that was going to be a site plan note, correct, Bonnie? This is in the FBIS and on the site plan. Okay. Okay. Anything else, board? Okay. Um, I believe we wanted to get committed as to when this was going to be uh, available to the public. We, um, depending on the extent of um, after tonight and we receive um, Mr. McGuire's um, changes, we will endeavor to um, make them as soon as possible and hopefully have this printed by Friday. Um, you know, endeavor to get forward for sooner. Um, we provided a draft of a uh, notice of acceptance of completion and on that we uh, committed to put the 20 day minimum okay. consideration period and just so people have a day, it's at April um, 2nd or 3rd, I can't remember what it was, um, as either 20 days after filing or April 2nd, so people um, you know, will know in case something happens that um, it wasn't there, but April 2nd would be uh, 20 days from Friday, and it would also encompass your meeting um, on the 30th, where there will be public comments on the site plan. So you would have those comments as well in your consideration uh, for the time to uh, okay. adopt and consider the time 20 days from filing or April 2nd? Whichever is later. So if we get it filed by Wednesday or Thursday, it'll be April 2nd, even though it's 21 or 22 days. If we don't get it filed until Monday, it'll be whatever 20 days is. Okay. 
Okay. Does the board understand? Yeah. Yes. So then this will be put on the town's web page and available to the public. Yes. Like the site plans are. Okay. And the three libraries. And the three libraries. And here in the building. And hard copy. How does that work with our meeting dates? Does that have anything to do with our meeting dates or? <coughs> no. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to accept the FEIS as complete. Motion by John, seconded by Ryan. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Josh. Chairman, can I ask? Yes. Yeah. Are expectations in the building for the findings? Sure. We'll um, hopefully have a draft by Friday. We're looking forward to the end of this week. Your document, but we'll have a draft as we believe. Okay. Any anticipation of how long the board will have to work with it after? It's your, I mean, we will endeavor to answer your questions as quickly as we can, but it's your decision as to when to adopt it. We will be here and we will respond as best we have to. October 2000. So it could possibly take more than the minimum that will allow. Well, I don't know if there's any minimum. If there's a minimum consideration period, then we will endeavor to you know, answer all the questions you can't commit, but we'll get there when we believe we work with you so far you know, to accommodate your time period and get the at information in and respond to your questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next this evening we have National Builders LP, LP and Lone Pay Trucking Corp. 134 Neely Town Road Warehouse. SCU permit site plan is a continuation of a public hearing. field work uh, to test some of the areas that had not been tested before, uh, resulting from the drainage plan revisions with, with the tenant that's going to occupy the building. Uh, Chazen has completed that work uh, more than last week. Uh, the results all look good, except for one area uh, where one of the bioretention basins would go. Uh, Perk uh, was not good at that spot, so we're going to commit to not to mine that particular basin. Uh, and again, it's, it's just it's a stop to drainage basin itself with the bioretention basin. So uh, that, that's pretty much what the field work has shown. Uh, from that, speaking for Dave, that uh, Chazen is working on revising the SWIFT, revising the, the drainage plan uh, to uh, answer Mr. Featherstone's comments. And we would hope to uh, get that information into the board by the, by the end of this week. So, and, so we believe the drainage questions will all be answered by the end of the week. Uh, the other issue that had come up uh, in uh, Major's review was about traffic and specifically about the uh, new requirements for analyzing whether you would uh, need a left turn or a right turn into the site. Uh, again, the Chase is working on that right now. Uh, if it does turn out, as I said to the board before, if it, if it does turn out with the new analysis that we do have to construct a left hand turn lane into the site, we don't see that as a problem. We would commit to do it. Uh, uh, there was a very wide um, right of way that the county has there. I think maybe it's only at 70 feet uh, uh, wide on our side. So, on. so if, uh, if the analysis does show we need that left hand turn lane, we don't see any problem with property acquisitions or permitting issues, we will we, we'll have them board enough for them to do that. But we'll also have that updated analysis into the board by the end of this week. Okay. All right. I think those are the two issues that we have <coughs> out there. Still one of them. Not outstanding, but you need additional uh, analysis based on Mr. Featherstone's comments. So. Okay. And we'll, we'll just, go ahead. Dave. I'm sorry. The, the, the traffic um, we're hoping to have by the end of the week. We may not be able to get through that, uh, but it will be at least early next week. Okay. So uh, the new drainage. 
change soon and into traffic and houses also. And, and just just two other issues too. We're uh, we have turned in a revised, uh, uh, should say revised, but a, a uh, landscaping plan that addresses your consultants' uh, comments. We're waiting to hear back okay. about whether that's satisfactory or not. Uh, and then on lighting, as we've discussed before, uh, we have revised the lighting plan to bring it down to the levels that it was originally approved by Mr. Kelly uh, okay. last fall. Uh, haven't gotten a confirmatory response back yet about that. Okay. So it, it is at the levels that it was previously. So the lighting and landscaping, the traffic, and we'll have the new drainage up plan soon. Yes. Okay. All right, um, as this is a continuation of a public health hearing, of, of a public hearing, we'll entertain comments and questions from the audience. Just please, uh, pre um, if we don't know who you are, please let us know your name for the record. Anybody with any comments or questions on 134 Neely Town? Yes, Don? Uh, again, Don Berger, Montgomery, New York. Um, the only thing I got to say is since they're bringing so much back, uh, the end of the week, next week, uh, next month, the following month, whenever they bring this stuff back, I'm asking uh, this board to uh, keep the public hearing open. No one else from the audience. Uh, board, any questions or comments on 134 Neely Town? I need to have some questions about fencing and such going back to its neighbors, et cetera. Yeah, I think Mr. Kelly's working on the lighting. And uh, Karen has uh, the newest plan, so she'll be uh, redoing that, um, which we haven't even seen yet, I don't believe, right? The new landscaping? Uh, no, that, that, was, that was turned in at yeah. February. February 5th, we got a plan, and that's the, the most up-to-date landscaping. Right. Right, that... Uh, because I know there was a comment about where the trees were to be planted. Right. Okay, that that, will, be, that will be adjusted on the plans we're giving you on Friday. That, gotcha. That, that comment was brought up by Mr. President. But yeah, about the yeah, guidelines for where you can plant around a storm over Right. Anyone else? Board? Okay, um, we have this plan we need to look at. We'll get the traffic next week. Um, the landscaping, there will be some adjustments to that that we'll get on Friday. Um, I'm guessing it would probably be best with all of this stuff outstanding just to continue this hearing on the 30th. Or what do you think? I agree. Yes. Seventh quarter to eight on the yes. 30th. So we'll reconvene this hearing on the 30th of this month at 745. This will be the public's notice you won't get anything in the mail and then we'll see a uh, motion we got a motion in a second all those in favor signify by saying aye, aye. jay will be back so we'll see you on the 30th thank you okay and next this evening we've got bracken road properties llc bracken 20 warehouses Bracken Road Leonard's Drive, SCU permit and site plan, and two lot subdivision. This is also a continuation of a public hearing. Hi, how are you? John Ahern, Bergen Legal Development for the applicant. Um, Dave Young and Jason. I'll leave the site plan comments to Dave. Okay. Um, right um, but as we discussed at the workshop last Wednesday, um, State law would require that before the public hearing for subdivision be even open, um, require a termination of significant under seeker. And the board informed us that they weren't comfortable um, having that done for tonight. They wouldn't have enough time to review what written termination. So tonight I would ask the board to consider if they would um, debate verbally having one and have one prepared for the next meeting at the 30th. If they want to do it tonight. And I will point out we've had landscaping, updated landscaping for a while that we haven't gotten comments back yet. Yeah, she's away. Sorry. 
Bill had signed off on the, the lighting, and I think you were okay with the sewer, too, correct? Okay. Uh, David, if you could update us on how you made out with the drainage that we discussed Wednesday. Well, the, the uh, plans were submitted last Friday. Okay. Um, so they basically are under review by Andy. Mm -hmm. That's gross. Andrew, are you doing the drainage? Okay. Um, this is a continuation of a public hearing. If there's anyone in the audience who would like to say a few words, have a couple questions or comment or concerns, uh, feel free. Yes, Sheree. Thank you, sir. given as a zone as zone one replied to my public comment concerning parking areas placed in the defined front yard setback that being the minimum of 60 feet for a collector arterial road by the building inspector okay. section 3020 definitions of words and terms section 9047d.10 9047d.20 front yard setback overlay district for various <coughs> public highways in all districts and section 140-50-33 site layout setbacks for material collector roads outside storage parking landscaping requirements i believe that was contained in his letter using 30-20 zone law definitions of the line front lock excuse me in 3020 zone law defines a line lot front and yard front and street if i if you need i can reference them uh, as a street is being defined as any federal, state, county, or town road, and any street that shows up on this subdivision plaque. A lot line front is defined as a front lot line and required front yard for property facing two or more streets shall be all the lines and all the yards fronting on said streets. Yard front zone definition uses the distance from the roof portion of the building on the front of the line of the lot, the front line of the lot. Therefore, it also can be determined that this plat, using these definitions in the law, defines this property as two front yards and as it is adjacent to two streets. It can also be defined as a corner lot in this section. I understand and agree with the inspector's determination that this, this lot plat does not meet the definition <coughs> of um, being specifically listed by, in the affected front yards in the overlay district. That would be 90-4070-.10 and .20. I understand that by the inspector's interpretation of our zone law, Bracken Road is not defined as a collector road. Using these sightings of the Town of Montgomery zone law, the issue of parking areas in the front yard was deemed acceptable, by my understanding. Zone law also defines parking lots, parking spaces, and items defining what parameters they must adhere to via multiple sections. I will not state them, but if requested, we'll provide those addressing these various aspects <coughs> concerning this if you wish. It does, in the collector and arterial selection, uh, section, state that once the front yard frontage is met, parking shall be allowed with a proper screening and B. Parking shall be located at the sides or rear yards and or front yards of a private commercial access drive. Section 901030 states that in a non-residential district, accessory off-street parking may be placed within required side or rear yards. It does not appear that the front yard parking areas are located on a private commercial access drive. By the inspectors, care of clarification eliminates them from being considered under the collector arterial stipulations allowing front yard parking after setback. Section 40 and applications of regulations, 40-10 provisions are to be specific. 
the provisions of the zoning law <coughs> shall be deemed to be specific. Those matters for which there are no specific provisions in this zoning law shall be deemed to be prohibited. There is no specific provision in the Town of Montgomery zone law stating that the accessory use parking parking lot is permitted in a defined front yard. Therefore, by extension of our zone law, parking space, parking areas are not permitted in a defined front yard. They may be placed according to 901030.10 in a side or rear yard. I could find nowhere in our zone, <coughs> back and forth, upside down, backward and forward, in our zone, where it states parking lots may or shall be allowed in a, punt, a front yard, other than those few areas where they discuss in the frontage of a collector yard, uh, a collector uh, or arterial. If, if you could tell me where it is in the zone, I'm willing to learn, but I have spent five days seeking what that front yard definition is in defining the parking lots. The only time it discusses these front yards are in fact in the item that I spoke. Well. And since it's not specifically stated in our zone one, <coughs> it has a specific allotment and a permitted use. And by definition, he has two front yards on the one corner lot and the other is a front yard. It is not a collector road. It is deemed a rural road. There is nothing in our code that gives us specific permission for this allowance. It allows side and rear. Now, of course, you can go to the ZBA and try to author that. But again, it is not a permitted use by our zone code that I can locate. I'm open to learn because I'm killing myself trying to find it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm sorry. I do, I do have two copies. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Making noise here. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, first I would disagree with the categorization of the inspector's determination of the code. Um, secondly, the inspector's role is to interpret the code and instruct the board as to what is and is not permissible, and the board is to follow the inspector's interpretation. Um, lastly, the use is not a use, so to speak, as it would be a use versus a single family dwelling versus a residence is what is prohibited when not explicitly provided for. So the inspector's interpretation was clear that not only was Bracken Road not a collector road, that as a separate issue entirely, that parking is permitted in the front yard where it was proposed. May I? Sure. I thank you. The only time it is allowed in the front yard in our zone law is when it's defined as an arterial or a collector road after a 60 foot setback as defined on Bracken Road in the table of of definitions in the area, right? When you go to that table of helping somebody, you know what I'm talking about. It is not, anything in here is not describing residential. This is all specific to industrial uses. It also states that what a French yard is. It also says that parking lots are accessory uses and therefore defined as an accessory use. Those accessory uses are not defined anywhere in the book other than by a side in a rear yard. So he did correctly state, and I concur, that it's not a collector road, it does not fit in the overlay district, but therefore, because it's not specifically defined in the code in any place, shape, or form, it is not a permitted use by the law. Now, he does not, that I know of, have the right to go against what is permitted and not permitted, that is before this can be get. I have studied this for three weeks. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, as, as inspectors, we, we have a letter from, we have a letter from Wall. It says buildings only require the 60 foot setback. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Anyone else, any comments on this back in 20? Yes, Barbara. disturbing them by putting a warehouse in the area or an impervious parking lot or any other building whatsoever. They're supposed to be there to protect the land and the, so why are we disturbing them? Why are we issuing special exemption use permits to put stuff that doesn't belong there? Thank you. Yeah, Donnie. Again, Don Berger, Montgomery. Uh, you know, this goes back to what I said when I first made my comment earlier today. Uh, you know, me, I'm a resident of this town. And I'll tell you, I really get sick and tired of these applicants coming in here with their attorneys or whoever it is. And it just seems that they're, they're bullying tactic. You know, they're, they're telling us what to do. They don't have a right to tell us what to do. And furthermore, we have other letters that Walt, Walt has signed that has been a problem. So maybe somebody needs to talk to Walt. That's right. Any comments, questions? All right, so we're really narrowing it down to what we have to look at here, correct? I agree. Consultants. Um, and we got this application. We opened a hearing uh, for Bracken 20 quite a while ago. And we have 120 days to close a hearing on a subdivision. So that's up this week. November 12th. Um, I mean, there's just a, a few things. Or what were you thinking feel about closing the hearing? <clears throat> Andrew looked at the stormwater. I mean, it's, it's not going to affect the site plan layout at all, or? Well, I was agree with that. Yeah. yeah. And then um, this issue with the parking in the front yard, are we going to are we going to figure that out in the next 62 days? That's, that's really I think it's been decided. decided. OK. Well, then the code official made this rule. I haven't seen that correspondence, so. But doesn't that go before the DBA? No. No, it has to go to. We don't. Yeah, we, we should be in your packet somewhere. You can go to the first. Quick okay. question. Um, sure, Corey. You're saying you got your ruling from Walter on that. The code enforcement officer made a ruling. So what is far? He's in far doing your industrial? He's doing the inspections on the but commercial. He doesn't rule any, he doesn't He's not doing code enforcement. Right. I don't care. So it goes right to walk through. It's only yeah. walk through. Yeah. So we, we have our, our letter. We also know that we're not drastically changing the site plan. We're not prepared to grant any approval. <coughs> We are against the time frame to close the hearing, which is 120 from the opening because it's a, <coughs> it's a subdivision. 
very comfortable with closing the hearing on this? Oh, yeah, yeah, hurry up, close it, close it, all right, close it. Uh, and can get the motion to close the hearing on this? Put, put, put asphalt by, everywhere. By Ryan, seconded by Rich, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, next, this evening we have Autumn Sky Development Company, Inc., North Drury Lane, SCU, Site Plan to Us Subdivision, uh, up for a secret determination. Now, we got this. Is, can the board make a decision if it was like to authorize directing the NAC deck next year? I think we're going to start working on the NAC deck for Autumn Sky. Or, I'm sorry, for, uh, for Bracken 20. So, we won't be on the um, we have to get a document put together and get it circulated and agreed upon about the one punch amongst the board members, okay. and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, Autumn Sky Development, North Curry Lane. about the well got resolved. The, the health department sent this back. Did you, did you, that did you see that, Ryan? I saw the response. I don't know if the plans have been revised. I think it's at 15 feet right now. Yeah. Um, I got the one in the front of North Jury there. The one in the front of Long North Jury Oh, no, there is one the existing pump house to be removed prior to starting construction. Uh, by, the by the entrance, there's a proposed well per Project 9 filed map. Okay. Um, yeah, this is a different one, Rich. Okay. Now, According to the health department, they have guidelines for separation from a boundary line to a well, correct? Yes. And on an outside lot line, it's different than an interior. That's correct. That's how it's explained. Yep. Um, that proposed well that was for the, on the old file map, now that this is a new, a new project, I would think it would come under the new guidelines, correct? Yes. Yeah. I would, I would suggest that you take that well off at the entrance. If that's a proposed well from a prior subdivision project. Yeah, we're, just move that. That's just, that, we're not using that well. It's just, but it's on. on the plan, and it doesn't, it, it, it's against the side unit. It's against the front, it's right against the front boundary line. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't meet the, uh, the yeah, but we're not, we're not that's just, we're just, it's a typo, really. We're not using that one. No, but it should be removed from the plan. Yeah, just a typo. That would be the easiest right. thing. It's a typo, it's not an actual design. Got to remove them? Well. No, no. Well, it doesn't have a septic either. The old? If you're going to put a well on The other new well is okay. In the front. Uh, there's only one well for the property. You, you have one well for the property, but there's a proposed well on Drury Lane. We have a proposed well where? There's no well. By the front, by the self-storage. There's no well. That, that's an old, we're, we're removing that. No, well. there's a second one. It well. says proposed. It, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a typographical error. It's it should be removed from the the storage. The there's, there's no water for the storage. It's just a self-storage facility. Right, but you... That's a, ty it's a, ty it's a typo. It's a typo. Okay. It's not, not a designed Now, there was a... An issue on the legend. Um, well, I had a question. Um, the subdivision map shows hatched marks, and so I went to the legend to see what the hatch mark means. I couldn't find it. So 
so I was going to ask Mike if you were here tonight. The crosshatch? Yeah. It's all weapons. The crosshatch is weapons. Yeah, that's all weapons. And is that Army Corps weapon? No, that's a legend? Or no, it's, there's probably a call out somewhere. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. Some of them Yeah, I know that's what it is. It's the, uh, the delineation, the weather delineations and numbers, the F4 and F5. So, but reviewing the plans today, because uh, we worked on a draft going back, um, I didn't see the transitional yard on the subdivision map, but maybe on the site plan. The site plan is about 14 sheets, but since the subdivision map is what gets filed in the county, uh, we bought up on, they bought up on the RE2, and our transitional is, the board knows, 50 feet. It's either fence or heavily landscape. And I didn't see that on the subdivision map. Maybe it's on the site plan. Uh, but that a part of the septic, at least part of the reserve and part of the initial, within that, as far as I can tell, although Mike doesn't draw us the 50 foot line, but on a 1 to 40 scale, I can rough it out. So I think that's an issue for uh, as a condition of approval at a minimum. Unless I'm missing something. That's clearly in the transition we got right there. Right. Again, maybe it's on the site plan, but I didn't see it on this map. The transitional yard is it's 50 feet, it's got to be on the commercial side. On the commercial side, and it's got to be left alone, right? And it's got to be, and further, it's got to be either fenced or landscape. Now, the board historically has gone with the landscape, and just especially stockade fencing, but you see the whole lot more behind. Yeah. So I, I peeked at the landscape plan on the site plan sheets, hoping I might find it, and I didn't see it there either. So I don't know. If that, I don't think it's an issue to add it, but it's what our code requires. Do you have the site plan map too? Yeah, we do. Yeah. We got it. Yeah, right here. Okay. Yeah, it's on the site plan. What's that? I believe it's on the site plan now. All right, well, that's it. All I get on the entirety sure? could get on the subdivision map as well. I think you showed us a little concerned about the. I'm sorry? I was a little concerned about not seeing the subdivision nearby residences north of the site you know how far away they are and how what screen you put in there. So do you have the, the uh, site plan? I have the site plan here. Um, I think it's on that. I, I'm looking for the landscaping plan. There should be landscaping. I mean, you have to abide by the site plan, so there's something that you Yeah, there's no landscaping shown in the transition yard, and we've got a portion of the septic system in the transition yard. It's on the landscaping plan is 18 and 20. transition yard on this on the subdivision plat is it on the site plan map on um, the dash line is shown it's not labeled i don't believe i'm just i'm starting to make a list of things that are outstanding that we need to to look at here the other thing, Fred, was at some point we were expecting to get an actual survey by a surveyor. We keep being told that we're going to be supplied one, but I think that Mike keeps signing the subdivision map. Um, the subdivision plan is actually signed now by Dan Janosch. Is it? Yes. Um, show uh, transition yard and landscaping in it. Is 
possible to get conditional subject to these kind of these? These are pretty, we've been here for like a year now, like 11 revisions. This is like very, very minor stuff. We've had 11 times that we've gone through this. Well, who's more? Yeah, yeah, I think that's more. I think that's clear. Huh? That's not our fault. Saying, I know, I know, I'm not saying it's your fault, I'm just saying it's very, it's a pretty simple thing, it's not like that controversial, it's a pretty, you know. Yes, and I know that, you just reminded me, Rose. The Colgan Fire Department, the commissioners and the fire chief requested a door. Access, access in the back. Door well, in the we'll back. add that on, but that's a condition, but that's a condition. Yeah, okay, put that on your own, please. Door. One other issue, and Bonnie caught it, I didn't. Uh, Bonnie read the SWIP, and you talk about a conservation area to be protected is in the SWIP, and this is the first time I'm hearing that at all. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, I mean. I don't, I don't think so, I think that's just a paper problem. No, no and your SWIP says that uh, bare ground can remain for three weeks before it's seeded, and I just asked Andrew, and minimum is 14 days, on big projects, we go down to seven days. You know, on the <laughs> selfish projects. So there's the a couple things in the SWIP that really have to be looked at. If there's a protected area, that's probably good for the town, but it's, I'm hearing about it today for the first time. So it's in the SWIP. <coughs> Andrew, Andrew, do you have any comment about that? But about the. No, I don't. I don't know what what you're looking for. No, well, he's at a conservation. I mean, I, I didn't do this. that part. I'm not familiar with. But okay. okay. I mean, yeah. Understood. Right. Okay. Um. There, there's reference to a conservation easement in the SWIP in the back where the tables are. Okay. So they're getting credit for it, so I think it just has to be looked at. Okay. Um, other areas are just I could not find anywhere an actual limits of disturbance. I see fences as far as soil fences, etc. But there should be a limits of disturbance on the plan, so we know the whole area that's going to be disturbed. And there should be an acreage shown too, correct? Correct, exactly. That's yeah. what I the actual number. Yes. Okay. And uh, the easement. Right. Um, it was unclear, so, you know, I'm looking at the set of information that I have um, in my files uh, that I've inherited. There's, on the plan, it says in terms of internal circulation, uh, the warehouse can accommodate WD-40 trucks for deliveries, but then it says only one W-62 truck can obtain access at a time. Is that in addition to the W-40 trucks? I mean, do you understand what that means? I understand that, like the 62 and the 40 is the length, but it says at any time. So can you have a combination of 40s and the 62 and only one 62? I'm not sure. Days? I'm not sure about that. I'm not likely not. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, to the best of my recollection, there's a very limited turning radius mm -hmm. to right. the south of the warehouse building. So I imagine it means that if there is a large truck that is backed into one of the loading docks, you cannot run over another truck in that area. Right. Any other truck or just the W62? Truck, and that, that's my question. Like what happens? Large truck is very limited turning radius. Um, the uh, in terms of the hours of operation, it says the warehouse will be open up to five to eleven, and it says self storage units have twenty four access. What's not indicated or is this is every day of the week? I don't, I don't know what the hours for, for, for the self storage. Yes, every day of the week for the self storage. For self storage, yes. every day. And then what about the warehouse? What were the hours of operation for what? Not um, you had 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. My question is on what days? Is it every day the warehouse is operating? Every day that is it? Do you mean it's seven days a week or five days a week? Is that what you're that's what we yeah, mean. Yeah, Monday through Friday. You got, you got a time, but we don't have the days. It would be every day. So each one, seven days a week, they'll be operating. Um, when I ran. Uh, the environmental resource mapper, um, the Indiana bat was flagged. I didn't see any notes about tree cutting. Um, I also haven't been able to find a New York State DEC response, but that might be my file, so I have to work with Sue on this. But again, I don't see a tree cutting requirement or something. But that, that, that's a standard thing. I, I, Indiana bat applies to every property everywhere. Yeah, but I didn't see a note at but all. But it's just, it's just, you wouldn't put a note, because it's yeah, just- Yeah, no, you do put a note on the plan. 
that's how the boards know when you're allowed to treat that. It goes, by, it goes by the DEC regulations. Just, just have Mike uh, put it on the plane. Um, exactly. Mike <coughs> suggested um, that there had been coordination through the secret process with New York City DEP, but I don't know. I don't think it wasn't on the uh, circulation notice that I saw. I believe Rich thought that it might have gone out for public hearing to New York City DEP, which then. So we have to see who received notice for the public hearing. The, D the DEP received notice. Yeah. They were notified. On the public notice for the public hearing? Absolutely, yes. And the county and the town clerk also. We went through yeah. this. And we're they were notified. Okay. So that was clarified. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Okay. I don't think we ever heard from DEP. No. It's just no. an option common. Yeah, it's, on, it's unfortunate, but it's not a no, we, we had a gentleman who was very helpful one time for another project, and it didn't seem to sense. That was the rumor. Uh, those are, that's the list of items I had embedded in the next that graph. Okay. Um, um, possible, we'll circulate it up. Draft to the board, and then maybe one to Mike in case he has. Yeah. Maybe that would be the best. Yeah, I think that if, soon. I, if I put holes in there, then. Then he can fill in the blanks. Exactly. Um, so we just talked about the well. So the so you not only is there this um, remnant well that you're showing from a prior right. approval, you're also showing your That's remnant right. septic system. So it probably the best thing to do is to take them off. Yeah. Okay. Chairman, this is a site plan issue of the septic fields are in the transition. Well, the, Mike's got to address that in the landscape in the transition yard. Yes. Soil testing, well, I'm sure it was done, but he, he's got to make some amendments there. Yeah, because he can't clear it. Can't it. Clear it. No, no, we need that. We need an answer on that. Fred, do we need to identify those that will need the way we did on Bailey Road. I, I, I think what we would, oh, with, um, with a marker. They were marked at one point. Well, they were flagged. Yeah, there's yes. flags out there. The, flag the, the flags there. were out there. Do we? You mean more permanent? Yeah, yeah. permanent marker. Oh. I, I, I think where you have one user or a building, it's not as, not as, it's not as a demanding use as it would be if it were a bunch of kids running around. Mm -hmm. So, you know, clearing limits will need to be delineated, which we're asking them to do, but they'll be during the construction process, so they don't they don't encroach on any of these adjacent areas. But let's try to get a good clean draft quickly and get it to Mike so we can fill in the holes anything and um, when we get that all together then we can look to make a decision is that better mm -hmm. I, I think there's just too many things to answer here mm -hmm. right, one more thing on sure this. Brian uh, at some point and I don't remember when it was it may have been a slash plan set but there's a new sign detail and maybe I, I didn't see this before but it doesn't look like something that Bill would have approved it's got internal, um, internally lit. It's like a ten foot by ten foot sign. Um, really? So okay. I don't know if any of us have really seen that. Which page? It's the last page. Oh, that's page two. Yeah. This is received February third. The pylon sign. Right. Okay. So we could at least reach out to Bill and find out if that was on the fighting plan that he approved. Especially since. Um, and she 20 of 19 of 20 was the one that he looked last revised 12 26 2019. Um, 
I don't know if doesn't want internally lit signs, so that's the only reason I'm saying it's that's a big yeah. sign. That is that's a huge sign. That's a huge sign. Yeah, that is. We'll have to go look at that. All of that's here. We can get him a copy of this. We'll get Bill a copy of that. in the area of disturbance as well in the front. Cross hatched away, septic on the side and landscaping in the uh, transition. The two things in the switch. The two things in the switch. The conservation was the other one besides the conservation? Yes. And the other one was the, it says the bare ground can remain on the scene of bare ground and heat it. Longer than correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we'll try to get an egg back out to everybody soon. If we can have something with that. Okay, thank you. Um next rec introductory local law number three of year 2020, establishing a six-month moratorium recommendation to the town board. Um I circulated a memo in the last week. I touched it up a little bit. Everybody get a chance to see that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah, the more time. We discussed it briefly at the workshop. Um, basically, it says... We want to... Yeah, we wanted to add, just edit it some so the town, the town board would have it. Because this is the last time we meet before they open the hearing on the moratorium. A concern we wanted to share in regard to buildings under 40,000 square, square feet is that the 40,000 square foot limit should be a cumulative area per lot, per parent lot. Um, this would prohibit an applicant from using this exemption to pr propose more than one building on a site or to subdivide into several smaller warehouses. So. You have one piece of property, you get one forty less than forty thousand three days. That's it. Does that sound good to everybody? Anything else you wanted to add? I think we said everything we wanted to say in our original memo yeah. with the okay. thresholds and all that. Okay. And this is a good addition. Okay. All right. Um, I entertain a motion to forward this over to the town board with those additions by John, seconded by Ryan. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Thank you. Okay, um, we have a, a slew of minutes here. Let's see. Now, down to oh, January 8th, the two, we can't do because uh, Jay's not here. And I wasn't here. Yeah, I don't we were born here. <laughs> I don't think you'll ever be able to approve things because the four members present at the time included Bill Carroll. So we'd never be able to do it. So so what is our well <coughs> excuse me. The law does not require that you approve minutes. Um, I would suggest <coughs> that Sue make the edits and file them and <coughs> excuse me, note that they were not approved, but still filed. So they'll be on the yeah, we get it. <coughs> All right. So we don't don't need your motion. I don't think you can. We can. Um, of all six sets of minutes, this one though. Um, and I made a note to so I just want to call the board's attention on camp properties. How long it was? Um, it says uh, 
the word not was left out. We changed the whole meaning, so we stuck the word not back in. And I won't bore you with the context, but it shows you how one three letter word. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, let's see. Now, one, two, three. We don't have enough for the 29 feet. So we'll need, and we will never. Is the bill's gone? No, if Jay was here, we could. Yes. So that will we'll have to hold off on that. Okay, uh, September 24th. Let's see. Count heads here. One, two, that we have four. Right, right. right. But um, Rich and, and John and Ryan were. Oof. Okay, so anybody got anything on uh, Monday, September 24th of 2018? Rich, Andrew, and Okay, nothing too substantive? No. no. So um, entertain a motion to accept, uh, ad adopt September 24th, 2018 Planning Board meeting minute by um, John, seconded by Ryan. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Okay. Um, Uh, May 28th of 2019. Let's see, one, two, we got four. <laughs> anything, anybody with anything of uh, a few little edits? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to uh, adopt May 28th, 2019 uh, planning board meeting minutes by Ryan, seconded by Rose. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. January 13th, 2019. Oh, I had a couple notes on that. Okay. All right, uh, entertain a motion to adopt January 13th of 2020. By Ryan, seconded by Rose. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. February 5th, uh, 2020, the workshop meeting minutes. Be straightforward, discuss it does, okay. And the only addition I made, uh, too, it was a duly noticed workshop, just so the reader understands there are workshops for legal planning board meetings. And then uh, this was when you did the 915 word 17K. I added all board members received prior drafts last week meeting in the week before this meeting, as opposed to we were handed a resolution that day. Yeah. Uh, entertain a motion to adopt those minutes, February 5th, 2020, by Rose, seconded by John. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And then uh, the February 10th, 2020 meeting minutes, a bunch of hearings. Um, felt like just yesterday. Yeah, I bet. Um, if there's nothing of substance, to, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to adopt those on February 10th, 2020, by Ryan, second by Rose. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Ryan. And last but not least, a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Ryan, seconded by Rose. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thanks, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.